Hello. That clip you would have just seen was from this morning about 6 a.m. and it is now almost 7 o'clock p.m. So it has been a day. Um, you might have guessed by that first clip of me pulling out a refrigerator that I woke up this morning to find the refrigerator dead as a doornail. So the refrigerator was toast. I don't know what happened to it, but you know, it's 25 years old. It was just its time, I guess. Um, but this set off a major issue for me because all of the appliances in my kitchen are white and you know, I'm not replacing everything at the same time. I'm just replacing a refrigerator. And of course I'm in a pinch because I need it and I need it now. Um, so I have to find a, a white refrigerator when pretty much everything on the market right now is stainless steel. B, I have to get one that will fit the space. I'm trying to find a refrigerator that is in an already limited color for being in stock and also is the right size to fit that space was almost impossible. I feel like I should be grateful that there was at least one option um, locally. I live in a town of about 40,000 people. So, you know, there's more options than a small, small town, but um, so we basically, we have a Lowe's, we have a Menards, we have a Best Buy, and then a couple of independent um, appliance dealers. And there was one option anywhere in town that was in white, would fit the space, and could be delivered by tomorrow and not December, between December and like April, May was when everything else would have come in. Um, I did have to go with a counter depth refrigerator rather than a standard depth. The one that was just pulled out, which is sitting actually behind you right now, and I'll show you that in a second too. Um, it's a 21 cubic foot and it was a little deeper than counter depth, but it was only still just shy of 31 inches deep. So it stuck out just a little bit from the doorway, but not so much that it was really even noticeable. So I had to opt for a counter depth, which is an inch or two um, narrower, shallower than the one that I just took out. So it is only a 17 cubic foot instead of a 21. So I'm gonna lose some space, but I also am not super mad about it because one of the pet peeves that I have about this refrigerator is the depth of it, you know, trying to organize anything in the refrigerator. When you put stuff in the back, it's just lost. I mean, everything else that's in front of it blocks you from seeing it. You forget things are there, or you have to dig. And so one that's a little shallower will help kind of ease that a little bit. But I also have some concerns about how much it'll hold, especially, I don't, you know, buy a ton of groceries. I shop weekly, so it's not like I'm stuffing things in there. But at the holidays, I have Christmas and Easter at my house. And so I have to cook for a lot more people and I usually have the refrigerator pretty stuffed to the brim. Um, so losing those few cubic feet might be an issue for the holidays, but you know, for twice a year, I can manage. Um, my boyfriend has a spare refrigerator in his basement, which is actually where all of my groceries are right now. I'm pretty grateful that he has that extra refrigerator. So I had somewhere to go with everything, um, but I can utilize that for two days a year. I think it'll be okay. So let me show you the situation. So this is the nightmare in question. The refrigerator that I kind of hate went out in the situation that it did where, you know, I didn't have the time to really shop for what I wanted and wait potentially months for it to arrive. That part kind of stinks, but I'm not mad to be rid of this thing. I don't know if you've had an experience with a side-by-side, -side, but honestly, I hate it. I mean, this freezer, it's so narrow that you can't fit much in it. And then the refrigerator really isn't much better. I mean, it held everything for the most part, but when I did have those holiday parties and stuff here, if I put together any kind of like a veggie platter or anything that was very wide, it didn't fit in the refrigerator. It was so hard to get things to fit in there. It just, this is such a terrible design and I'm shocked that they still make them as much as they do, but I did see several of them in the store while I was shopping today. But I, I am honestly kind of glad that it's gonna be gone. Um, so let me show you the other situation here. So this doorway here was part of my problem because it's only 30 inches wide. So I had to get something that with the doors off would fit through the doorway. Um, and so a lot of the standard depths are so deep that they wouldn't have even worked. But for the most part, with the doors off, everything would fit. My issue was once you turn this corner, this is the space where the refrigerator sits and it is the distance from here back to the wall is only 30 inches. And so a standard depth refrigerator, they all seem to be 33 to 34 inches deep now. And so I was looking at having a refrigerator that stuck out, you know, this far into the doorway. And when it's an already narrow doorway, there was just no way 
there was no way I could feasibly do that. So I kind of had to settle for the one option that would fit and was in stock. And so that's what I, what I got. What I ended up with is the 17 cubic foot um, refrigerator. The one thing I am grateful for, I was really afraid that I was going to have to settle for one that had the freezer on top and then the refrigerator on bottom, like the old fashioned ones like I grew up with when I was a kid. Um, I just, I really don't like them because you use the refrigerator most of the time, right? And so you have to bend down and kind of dig through things to find what you're looking for. So I really wanted the refrigerator to be on top. The French doors would have been nice, but I didn't really care if it was just a single open as long as the freezer was on the bottom. And I did get lucky. The one available option anywhere in town was actually a freezer on bottom and then single door on top. So I am happy with that. I'm kind of happy that it's a little shallower, so I won't have to worry so much about things getting buried in the back of the fridge and not being able to see what I have. Um, but the other issue, of course, was the height. So this new refrigerator is 70 inches and there was only a 67 inch space right here. So um, I had my son help right up there used to live a cabinet. And it was one of those that was just like the little short above the fridge cabinets. Um, but you know, it, it had to go in order for this refrigerator to fit there. And I feel like this was the one thing that has gone my way because it was just two screws into a couple of studs, pulled them out and the wall behind it was perfect. I was afraid that it wasn't even gonna be plastered and I would have to deal with that or that there would be damage I would have to repair, but there wasn't. Um, so all I had to do was add some paint and get it ready for tomorrow. So it is ready to go and waiting uh, between 8.30 and 12.30 tomorrow morning. The new fridge should be here. So I will give you a little tour of the new refrigerator once it is in place and kind of let you know what I think about it. The new fridge is here and in place. My initial reaction, I really hate those handles, <laughs> but at the same time, it's kind of nice that they're not the white plastic ones because I had that on the last fridge and they just yellowed over time. But that style is very, very industrial and it's just not me, but it was the only option available. So here it is. And I think I'm gonna get one of those little carts that fits like in between that I can put spices and stuff on to help fill the gap. Everything is back and kind of unloaded. I still have all of my fridge stuff in baskets. The freezer, I just kind of tossed it in and I'll sort that out later. But for the refrigerator, I have a lot of bins from the old fridge that I used to organize everything. And so now I need to sort through those and see where and how they're going to fit and decide if I'm still gonna put the same things in them or how I'm gonna do this. Um, so I'm gonna work on that. And then once I get that sorted, I'm gonna start loading things into them. So. Well, let's go. Okay, I'm gonna mull laid out. Now I'm going to pop open the fridge and start shoving and see what fits where. a lot of stuff that's not going to fit in the same places as it did before. So I'm definitely going to have to reconfigure how I'm going to put things in these bins. This kind of stuff used to go in the door and I don't think it's going to work in there now. So now I've got to find a place to put it here where it's not going to be too tall. And at the end of the day, I may end up having to take out a shelf. We'll see. Thank you. 
want another one of these to put produce in, like all of my vegetables that could sit right here next to it. Let's see if it would fit another one. Oh yeah, easily. Trouble is, they have changed out this stuff so much at TJ Maxx since I bought it all that I don't know if I'm gonna find the same thing here. And I might have actually gotten that one from Amazon, so I did get some from Amazon, but I think the only ones that came from Amazon were these. But now I have to figure out continents because those are taller and they are going to take up a lot more space and I'm thinking they're gonna to have to go on the top shelf, but I really want them to be in a bin so they can be slid out. So, I just don't know what to do with this has to go up here because it's the only place it'll fit. So we honestly just have an absurd amount of condiments. I don't know why. Um, I think it's mostly my son's, especially I think the hot sauce collection alone is a lot of it. But I'm going to sort through, probably toss some things, and then see what I can still fit. I think I am going to get rid of this one. Um, it's probably kind of hard to tell on camera. Maybe you can see a little bit right here. Um, but I made the mistake of putting this in the dishwasher and it's definitely not dishwasher safe. So it kind of warped it a little bit and it doesn't sit level. So I think now is the time to get rid of this and then decide what, if anything, I'm going to replace it with. I do think this will be good for a lot of the condiments. I have one. So I make noodle bowls all the time. And so this one has all of my stuff for that. So I've got liquid amino soy sauce, chili garlic sauce. I have a red curry paste and then my ginger, which I'm just about out of, I need to order some more. So I use these regularly and I always use them together. So I decided to put them all in one bin. So anytime I need to make my noodle bowl, I pull out that and then I pull out this. It says Asian slash stir fry on the label. And that's because everything that is in this bin is what I use in those noodle bowls. And this is my salad bin, so it has my greens in it. And I'm toying with the idea of just leaving this, because this is the actual greens, on its own. And then in the salad bin, I could put all of my produce in there. Not necessarily everything that would go in it would be on my salads, but certainly all of the salad toppings would fit. So that might be one solution to the produce. So possibly this one for salad dressings, but I do only have a few salad dressings, so they don't fill it up. I do use the vegetable broth a lot, so it needs to be easily accessible. So I don't know if I like having to reach in there and pull that out every time, so maybe not. My maple syrup is something I use frequently too. But I feel like, I don't know if you can even see the door, but everything up here is just, it has to be short in order to fit in that. So here's where I'm at so far. And I think I'm probably going to have to take a break from this. I do have to clock back into work here in 10 minutes. So I probably need to just shove in, this is the rest of the condiments that I have. So I probably need to just shove those in for now and do a little thinking on what I want to do for bins and then come back to this a few minutes before I have to clock back in. And I have made a decision and I thought it was probably going to come down to this, but I've decided to remove a shelf because with all four of them in there, there's just not enough room to put anything that's very tall. And so, now I can put condiments and things that are taller down here, which I will sort that out later. But that will allow me to put this bin up here with the rest of my stir fry stuff. And then I can still keep my open jars and then all of this will be condiments and things that I just reach in and grab frequently. So for now, we're just shoving everything in. I'm going to pop back into work and finish up my day. And then from there, I will sort out what to do with the rest of the stuff. 
Maybe that needs to be my salad bin, and just the rest of the produce that is not intended for salads can live in the produce drawer, which makes sense. That is what the drawer is for. And then I have my fruits in here too. I've got some apples, a pomegranate, cranberries. Um, that's just about really it for refrigerated fruit. I have bananas every week too, but they live over there. Um, and I am out of lemons right now, so I do need to get some more of those, and those will go in here too. And I used to always put the lemons in this little doodad and my cut up onions too, but we'll get it sorted right now. I gotta get to work. Okay, I think I have it sorted. It is always subject to change again, depending on how I feel. But the door, I took out one of these because there just wasn't enough space. So I actually put it down here and I used it for all of the like savory sauces, like steak sauce, barbecue, Worcestershire, um, teriyaki. Then I have salad dressings in this one. This is another kind of like a vegan bin, the vegetable broth I use all the time. I have like tahini, a hoisin sauce. I have a black bean sauce. So that kind of stuff is in there. And then my canned water is up here. I've got a peanut butter and jelly. The peanut butter will fit like this, but it's it's a tight fit and it's not easy to get out. So I think that will frustrate me. So I just went ahead and turned it over on its side. Um, a couple of just little smaller jars of things like a roasted red pepper um, tapenade and then basil pesto back there. This is um, Bragg's Liquid Aminos that I use to spray on my popcorn. So just kind of some smaller stuff. And then this one has all of the hot sauces and then your basic like um, ketchup and mustard. And then of course, water, plant milks. My son, for whatever reason, this is reverse osmosis water and he doesn't like it. So he still wants to use the Brita pitcher. So I have that in there for him. And then this bin I decided is just going to be produce. So I have my fruits in there. Um, this only seems to fit because I have my cranberries under it. So that may, I don't know, it may end up moved because if the cranberries are not in it, then it's just, it's too tall or too shallow, I guess, and the lid pops off. So um, anyway, there's that. The salad bin, I went ahead and put the salad or the greens back in the bin. And there is a little bit of room on top to um, add some of my salad toppings in another one of these style containers. Just grabbed an empty one so I can test that theory and make sure it's gonna work. But I can cut up like onions, peppers, broccoli, things like that, and put in there. And so that will still rest in there. Then this is a sandwich tray because my son's <laughs> the best laid intentions. I did not become plant-based until about a few years ago. And so, you know, of course, getting them to not eat meat and cheese is pretty much impossible. And they're teenagers, I'm not gonna force it. You know, that's a decision that you have to make for yourself. And so I respect that. But anyway, so meat and cheese in there for them. And then bread and vegan. So I've got like my sourdough that I get from my local baker is this one back here. I've got one tortilla left in here I use for making tofu wraps. I don't have any tofu at the moment. Um, I'm two days away from grocery day. So thankfully <laughs> the fridge wasn't stuffed full whenever um, it went out. But yeah, tofu and tempeh will live in there too. Um, this I already had for open jars. So like salsas and applesauce and things like that. But now I think I'm just going to have to get rid of the open and just put jars <laughs> because since I can no longer put like my olives and things in the door, they've had to go in this bin too. And then of course my stir fry Asian noodle bowl, um, bin, which gets used very, very often. I would say at least four times a week. And then the condiments that go along with it. So that's where I'm at right now. I have another grocery order to pick up on Sunday and I'm sure I will need to rearrange some things maybe a little bit, but I think we're set. One thing I forgot to mention, I left this open space. I used to have a bin to put leftovers in, but depending on what I made, if it was in like a casserole dish or something, it didn't really fit in that bin. So, and coincidentally, that was also the bin that was warped. So for now, I've just left an open space for leftovers, but if I need to get another bin, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But I think for right now, it will be good enough to just leave an open space. And overall, I can say that I am much liking the depth of this fridge better than the last one, because before, you know, I would put these in and then there was still space in front of it. And so things could get lost behind it or they would go in and things get stacked in front of it. And so it was really hard to keep it organized because it was just too deep and everything would get shoved in the back. And I, 
never really liked that. And so I think I didn't realize how much I would really love a counter depth fridge until I now have one. This is great. I can see everything in there. And all I have to do is just grab a bin and pull it out and like, that's it. There's nothing behind it. Everything is at a glance or at, you know, fingertip. I think the most important thing for me for organizing this was making sure that the things I use regularly. So like this, 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 my um, plant milks, my vegetable broth, like all of those things being really quickly, easily accessible, eye level, easy to grab and pull out. That was the most important thing to me. I feel like when it comes to organization, the things that you use regularly, if you make it easy to get to those things, you're going to be a lot happier and things are going to stay organized. If you put them in a place where they're not easy to get to, that is when you kind of fall into the habit of just tossing things in wherever they land because you don't want to go to the trouble of putting them back where they belong. That is what I try to prevent with my kind of organizational methods. And I think we're pretty good. Um, I have two teenage sons, so the odds of this stuff all staying in order, that's always been my problem. The condiments with the old door, or yeah, the old refrigerator had like three different shelves on the door. And I would try to keep different types of condiments on each one, but they would end up just being a mix match of things because the kids would just kind of toss stuff back wherever they felt like. So we'll see how long that lasts, but that is it. Oh yeah, and then there's this, which I had to take out. I'm going to just slide it in right back here. 